Is today going to be a good day? Are we live? Folks? I think we are. Oops, oops, oops. Yeah, we are. Oh. <laughs> That's a good day. That's a good day. Good evening, Dresden. Good evening, anything. Woo. For those of you who are here Thursday, you know that we had some technical difficulties and all of you who couldn't make it, it wasn't recorded. We had a private one little small session that no one else got to see. It was a one and off moment. So I apologize, you guys. I think a lot of people messaged me that they wanted to do that um, Father's Day, like, what is it, a sunset and canoe type of thing. So we'll probably, we'll do it again. Sorry to the people. It was... It was VIP only. Anything is right. Anything is right. Um, hello, Rosie and Penny, you guys. I'm sure many of you recognize the name Rosie. Now her little sister, another little artist in the making, has joined us today because Penny loves squirrels, we heard. So, um, uh, and I think their mom is joining as well. Maybe sometimes she's just a videographer. Sometimes she paints. I'm not sure today, but we've got their family in, which I love. Always great to have them. Um, cheeky dude, hello, random guy, humiliating gamer, look at all y'all, great to see ya. Um, someone's asking me about playing Fortnite, sorry you guys, on this page you're not gonna find very many video games, okay? When I say very many, that's just me being, that's just me teasing, because you're not gonna find video games on this page. One day we did do, actually maybe we should try, we should try it again. One day we did that uh, Pictionary Air, so it's like a VR game of Pictionary, and we somehow figured out how to stream it between both of the TV and the computer, and it was a fun, I think we all had a good fun with that. It was cool for us also to get together and play a game like that. That was cool. So we are gonna be going down to one paint night a week coming up here, um, but that doesn't mean I'm still be coming in on Tuesdays. I'm just gonna be doing something else. I'll either be painting what I'm painting or maybe we'll play a game like that. But we do have to go down to just one paint night a week, unfortunately. But maybe that'll be good. We'll all, we'll have more people coming together. And here, oh, Rain is actually, that was gonna be my next topic of conversation, so thank you. She was saying your aunt is a great photographer, such a good idea to paint her images. And yes, 110%. You are right. She is the best. I I just as I just paused there because I just realized I forgot to write her um, Instagram name on this little squirrely down here. Of course, in the caption uh, of my YouTube video, I will tag her and all of her stuff for you guys. She's Jacqueline Sinclair on Instagram. Um, I feel bad because photographers obviously they crop things properly. I cropped this down to be so that you could see the squirrel close up, but the picture is actually like a nice. Like landscape version. I know some photographers might not like that. So sorry, Jack, when you see this. Um, I do highly suggest everybody to go look at her stuff because it is awesome. And then, yeah, it's a nice way because then I don't have to like worry about copyright issues with photos. Um, and then one day, like she can paint her own photos too, which will be cool. So yeah, I am liking the paint Jack's paintings. Uh, what should we call it? Or paint Jack's photos. Um, she's got lots of animals, you guys, but she also has beautiful like landscapes we could try. That's where they're kind of going. Our paint nights are kind of going to go in that direction. Um, I'm always taking suggestions, though, you guys. Never be scared to send me a line of like a picture you want to try, or a painting you've seen, or a painting of mine. I'm always up for um, suggestions, because this is for you guys, right? I don't know what you want to paint. And again, I... Uh, <laughs> I know this is not helpful for people who are looking at a small screen, but I did, again, forget to do my little outline drawing up here, but here's a... Some of you, if you follow me on Instagram, probably have seen me, saw me draw this live yesterday. Um, this is the shapes we're going for. She's a little messy, but you can take a screenshot, you can uh, whatever. She'll be up here for now. If you don't see it, not a big deal. I will easily show you guys how to do it. What time is it here? Oh, it's only 8.04. Look at me just being ahead of myself. Um, let's see. What is the story? Welcome to Tuesday Paint Nights with your host, Tay Tay Ski. Um, we are doing this squirrel today. We already got to that point. 
cool um, YouTube people. Thanks for watching. I always love hearing that people are watching them on their own time. Um, that's why it killed me when I couldn't record my last one. Um, random guy, thanks for the share as always. Um, what else we got? You can start with a pencil. Some people are way more comfortable with a pencil in hand to do these shapes that we're going to be doing on here. But I would highly suggest to not push very hard, okay? If you push hard, you'll get little powder, um, graphite powder out from your pencil and it will mix and blend with the colors on your page. Ooh, I hope I'm not lagging here. Well, just see how that was. Um, uh, um, 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 but I do it with paint. Like I said, uh, it is easy to start with a paintbrush as well. Please tell me if I am like super lagging or not. <sighs> you guys, I don't know. Like this time, don't worry. I plugged it in last time I did it. And um, I plugged it in, my OBS is working fine, it's not lagging on there, so let me know, let's all do, I'm gonna do a little refresh on there too and see if that does anything. Cause that's frustrating. Who knows, I'm sorry guys if it's lagging. YouTubers probably once we watch it, just cause I'm seeing on my other computer, it is uh, smooth. So the recording will be smooth. You guys watching might have, it might be like a half second delay of my voice. That happens sometimes. Um, we're just gonna go for it. Uh, back to the, the terms and conditions here. Uh, what else we got? Trust the process. Your squirrel's gonna look funky for a while. Okay, look at this. Does that, like it's gonna look weird. There's gonna be weird lines. There's gonna, it's not gonna look exactly like mine. Um, and some people sometimes lose confidence in themselves and think that it sucks and they don't see it through. And that makes me sad when you give up. Cause I promise if you trust the process and wait till the end, it will 110% work out for you. I promise. Uh, okay, my computer's just being weird. So I hope you guys are still seeing me here. Um, what else we got? Please ask questions. Any questions you have, uh, it may help somebody watching it later. It might help somebody at home who can't comment. It might be helping somebody who doesn't even know that that's the problem they're having. So I love to get questions so I can hopefully help out as many people as possible at any time, whether it's live or later. And what's the last thing that I like to mention? Um, is... I teach it like the easiest, most straightforward way. So we have lots of skill sets. Like how old's Penny? I think Penny's like four years old or something. I could be wrong. Um, but we have all age groups that come and all of them turn out so great because you go to your own skill level, you go to how much detail you want to add. I'll teach you the bare bones and then you can push it as far as you want. Um, there are a lot of people who love to take the next few hours or so, or even the next day to touch up on their painting. And then they send me a picture later and it is just absolutely beautiful. So trusting the process, like anything said down there is the most important step. Okay. And I'm going to be using acrylic paints this whole time. You can, I do like to say that you can do it with whatever you want at home. Um, if you don't have acrylic, I just suggest acrylic because the class is directed more for that. But you can make it happen with anything. You can do markers, you can do watercolor. Um, the only difference between most other mediums and acrylic is that I work from dark to light. So we will use dark colors and adding whites and bringing that on top. So <clears throat> the only problem with that with like watercolor, pencil crayons or markers, you can't paint white. Like you can't paint a lighter color over top of a darker color. So, in those cases, you have to be very conscious of where the whites are gonna go. I won't be teaching it as exact for you. You have to look at our little squirrely down here and you give a good squint. That's a really good way to be able to differentiate the darks and lights between the animal or the picture that you're looking at. And you can see that like in his little mouth, right under his chin, right under his little belly and the top of his tail are a bit lighter than the rest of him. So you have to be conscious of that when you're laying down your color. If you're not using acrylic, if you're using acrylic, ignore everything I just said and we can get started. Uh, Charles O oh, from Jersey and Jenny, you guys, thank you. Also, I feel like I saw pictures of one of you graduating or something, so happy graduation as well. Um, you challenged me to use MS Paint Tay whenever I get the chance. Um, am I still gone? Do a refresh. 
Am I gone to you guys? What's going on? Everything looks like it's good to go on my side now. Always refresh when something weird happens. Okay, good, okay, good, okay, good. Beauty. Cheeky dude, thanks. Okay, uh, someone asked me about MS Paint. Ugh, that's... Yeah, I that I don't even know where to begin with that. That would be tough, be very tough for me. I paint digitally with Photoshop, so MS Paint would be just a whole other trip. Awesome, Rain. Thank you. I know that's the point. I know. I know. I can't even imagine they're just drawing with a mouth. I guess you guys. I guess maybe that's one Tuesday. We'll do that. I will try to paint something in MS Paint. I'm just gonna turn on my uh, time lapse here because I've been forgetting to record them. And we're gonna get ready to paint this cutie little squirrel. Oh, Cinderella, are you painting with us today? Hello. Yes, look, I feel so much better with my overlays back. I feel so much more comfortable than last stream where everything went wrong. <laughs> But I will tell you guys, the one positive part of last stream, since I couldn't record it, meant that we could listen to whatever music we wanted. So we were jamming. It was good. It was good. I would always suggest anyone, I don't know if you can hear my music ever. I always have to play like non, whatever, unlicensed or non-copyrighted music or whatever. Or else on YouTube, they will cut the audio and that just defeats the purpose for everybody. But... If you, yeah, Flamingo Crafts is into the music. See you guys? I suggest to go on Spotify and listen to Songs to Sing in the Shower when you paint. It's a good, it's a good playlist. 10 out of 10 would recommend. We've got a couple people here also can vouch for that. Okay. So another thing you guys is going to be very interesting today. We're just going to paint this natural color. We're not going to go too crazy. It's not going to be like Taylor. We're just like blow, throwing saturated colors and glitter everywhere. We're just gonna try to paint like a nice, pretty squirrel. I feel like some people, it'd be nice to learn how to draw realistic or color realistically as well. But I did tell you guys to bring orange because it's you still need to bump up some color. Okay. So we're gonna start with brown. I use a good old burnt umber always. Let's see. I always got to give it a second. It can do it. Burnt Umber, there we go, looks like that. Um, if you don't have a brown at home, you can mix like a touch of black into your orange if you want. You can mix blue, I'm pretty sure if you mix blue, yellow, and red, all the primaries, you can get a brownie color as well. That's why I'm saying pretty sure, I feel like as a teacher I should know, but. I will be honest with you guys, I've took a lot of color theory classes uh, in art school and I learned that I hate mixing colors and I just buy them by the tube so I don't have to. <laughs> but some people love mixing colors so it's totally whatever you rather. Okay, you guys ready? Take a breath. You're not going to mess up. It's so easy. We're having fun. This is supposed to be a stress relieving process. Okay. You're gonna get a little brush. It can be skinny, it's helpful if it's skinny. Oh, I just froze with a great face on there. There we go. Mix monkey brown all mixed together. There you go. So I wasn't wrong about the brown. Okay, with your little brush, you are going to, here's my water dish here, and I'm just gonna scoop water with your brush onto, oops, I was just covering, onto the palette. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that pigment or that paint into your water so that you have a really watery concoction, like chocolate milky. Hey, and the paint is brown now, so that's even more accurate than when I usually say that. We're trying to make a good old chocolate milk color here with a bunch of water. Color. Consistency is what I meant. Okay, and the reason we're doing that is because we don't really want to worry too much about these shapes that we're laying down. This is just for us to eye it out Place it out on the canvas, um, and we're gonna paint over top of it. So we don't want it to be super dark and thick and full of texture and pigment because then it'd be very hard for us to cover over top of it. Okay? So, acknowledge your whole canvas. It's really easy to get stuck and be scared and paint like a little squirrel on the bottom, but we wanna use the whole space. So, let's see. We are first going to be painting the circle of his little belly, okay? Remember, we need to put a head up here and a tail over here. 
So let's go about right here. And see how it's not perfect? Like I'm going around a couple times because we're gonna paint over it. It's okay if it's not perfect. I'm just trying, sometimes it takes a couple swipes to try to make the circle that you want. Okay. Easy, you guys. Circle. Done. And then right above, we're going to get ready for his little head. So let's put another circle above him. It kind of looks like a snowman right now. Number eight. Racetrack. What else does it look like? Paintings always look like, I mean, always start with something nice and simple. White, Rosie, what did Rosie say about the sea, the starfish, or not starfish, seahorse. First the letter S, then the seahorse. <laughs> the flamingo started with the number two. All about breaking it into shape. Okay, so we've got a body. We've got a head, okay? And now we have to imagine, yeah, the snowman, exactly. Oh, so hello, Lisa, how you doing? Okay, ready? Now, let's, a snowman toppling, yeah, he's just like, ah. or what's the Star Wars character, like BB-8 or whatever? Maybe he's that guy. Okay, where's his little, they have funny little chubby legs, so they're gonna be like a little egg. Also, hi, Max Brown. And Cinderella with the prop, thanks, girl. Okay, let's do just a good old egg. So now we've got a snowman with a leg going. Remember, don't be stressed. They are gonna look weird as heck for a little while. My nose is so itchy, I'm allergic to a plant in here, I think, you guys. Okay, what else do we got? We've got the snowman, we've got the body, we've got his legs. And now we gotta acknowledge where his little arm's gonna go. Boop, boop. And so this is like the top part of his... Oh yeah, I can't because this is gonna go just uh, over above that. One part of his arm. Oh, hello Aiden. How are you? How's your evening? Your early evening. Uh, Cinderella has taken to sketching out in chalk. It's easy to paint over and erase. Hey, there you go. There you go. Sometimes I use chalk on my big ones too, or like a pastel or a watercolor pencil crayon or something. I feel you on that one. Uh, Aiden, it's 3.18 a.m. Look at that, you guys. We always appreciate when you make it to the stream. It is commitment, I agree. Cause look, it's like still bright outside here. Usually it's dark at this time. It's very, summertime in Canada, it stays light for a long time, which is great. Don't get me wrong. It's just hard for me when I like to work in the darkness. And when my whole s studio looks so much nicer. <laughs> when it's dark outside. <laughs> okay, we've got this little creature going. All right. Where are we going now? Should we give him a little snout on the end of his head? So we're gonna start at the top of the circle that we've drawn, and let's just kind of bring it out to a pointed shape. Kind of give him like a cone head. I know it's getting crazy. Looking at the picture of it on my screen, I can tell that some of you are probably like, what is she doing? What is she teaching us? <laughs> My aunt actually told me that this squirrel had a lot of spunk. They were like all staying at like a little cabin <clears throat> out in the middle of nowhere or something or in the woods. Um, and they, this little squirrel would wait for people to go into the water and he would go and rummage through all their things and eat whatever and like bite holes and eat zippers and was just this little spunky guy. <laughs> this is another one of my aunt's photos, yes. She has a story with this guy. Okay, so we've got that head. 
So let's imagine we got above the head, we're gonna come down, we go above his little bump on the back, and we're gonna bring that line all the way down. You guys gotta trust me. Squirrels are usually spunky. They are generally spunky. There you go. This song's a little crazy. I love a good spunky. My parents have one that knocks on their door for peanuts. Stop. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. Guys, we could put a peanut in this little guy's mouth, maybe, if we want. Am I listening to, like, two different... Oh yeah, I was listening to different songs. That got weird for a second. Okay, we drew that line right on down. Remember guys, if I'm going too fast, if you have a question, if you want to stop me, holler at your girl anytime, okay? And you can basically just square off the bottom. Do your parents name that peanut knocking squirrel? I would name him. I saw a video on TikTok of someone who, like, adopted, well, not adopted, I'm sure they just found a baby squirrel and then just kept it. And it was, like, domesticated and it was so cute. It would, like, sit in their pockets or, like, sit on his lap when he drove and just, like, eat nuts and stuff. They named him Gray. Oh, you guys, the knock, the peanut knocking squirrel was named Gray. Hey, you're drawing my chirpy. Hey, there you go. Look, there's someone else with a squirrel. Okay, so we got this. Penny says she'd name him Peanut. Hey, that's a good name too. Maybe we should name this one Peanut today. We can name him Peanut. Okay, so we went on down. We made that flat part. Now let's just draw a line just straight out from underneath there because he's got a cute little long foot down there. That works. Sorry, my nose is so itchy. There's also one named Fluffy, but he just hangs on the fence. Aww. That reminds me of one of my friends, her, um, her husband's a woodworker, and this is what she requested for, let me find her. Mother's Day is this little, wait, is it still on here? Oh no, maybe she doesn't have it on here. There it is. He made like a little bench, do you see? to put on the fence and it has like food in it so that the, the squirrels can sit and eat on it. Isn't that cute? Come on, there we go. Oh, and there, look, I'll just promote him there. That's the, that's his wood page. But I can't wait for them to post pictures with a little squirrely on them. Okay. Someone was saying that their squirrel's chonky as heck. Hey, you guys know how I feel about the chonky animals. They're my favorite. Okay, and then at the end of that long line that you just made, let's just make like a little bump. Beep. Look how easy that was. You can even, if you want to make it, if you want to go all out, you can add one little like circle there and it'll just kind of give him like his bottom foot. It might look weird, but we'll give him nails at some point. Okay. Realistically, that's there. We don't have to worry about that now. Okay. Look, it's basically looking like a squirrel right now. I hope you guys are still having faith in the little babes. So we are going to come straight up to the top of this squirrel's head. I just kind of use this point for reference, but everyone's points might be different. So just the top of his little head. And you're going to make one line kind of tinily at an angle. It's like a tiny, tiny angle back. And then you're just going to curve. Oops. You're going to curve the other side down. I'll bring it cute. I'll bring it cute. I just said because I read cute. I'll bring it close. It kind of looks like a little shark fin outside of his head, hey? Eh? 
Okay, so we've got that. We've got his little leg, but now we need to just put his little hand coming out a bit, okay? And so we've done his first little limb. So now we are just going to go, because it goes just about over past his snout. We're going to bring this line just right on down. <laughs> I always laugh at the thought. I guess if that picture wasn't there, if somebody came onto the stream right now and saw this, they'd be like, uh... What you painting, girl? So we've done that line, right? And the point of doing this little oval that we did down here is to just follow it. We're going to start the line up in his face. We're going to come down on that circle and just bring out his little arm. So we basically did a backwards L. Again, tell me if I'm confusing. Tell me if this is easy. I feel rusty for some reason. Even though we did this on Thursday, it's not like I've had a longer break. I just feel rusty. Oops. And then his cute little hands are just like literally an oval if you want to make it. It's just a little egg. I kind of made his arm a little long, but he can be holding out his arms more than in the picture. That's okay. All right, do we see a squirrel coming to life? All right. Now this is like basically an S, I guess. Is that a happy tree behind that squirrel? <laughs> hey, I've been called Barb Ross a plenty of times. <laughs> What a compliment, though, you know? I'll take it. We laughed about that last stream. They're like, can you guys imagine if Bob Ross was around and he was running his own lives? He would be so kind and gentle to us all. Oh, and I saw someone say the dog's butt. Sorry, my brain just, like, disappeared for a second. The dog butt will always be there, you guys. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay, let's make that tail, folks. So, totally up to you. You can make it big and bushy if you rather. In the picture, this guy's is a little bit thinner. Maybe it's because he was such a shifty dude, like we heard. Um, so, we can even bump it up a little bit. Let's just bring a nice fancy S. Is an S, maybe not an S. But you start at his little butt at the bottom. You come up and do a nice little over curl. Shifty the squirrel, yeah, maybe that's what you should name him. Shifty Joe. <laughs> but that's a squirrel, like if I've ever seen one. Okay. We've got that tail. We've got that, we're just, it's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. We've got his body. We've got the legs, we've got a head. We've basically got a squirrel, am I right? So what we're going to do next, well after this step actually, and this is completely up to you guys. Um, uh, again, I'm always very, let you guys take control of what you want your backgrounds to be like. Usually I do the backgrounds at the end, but in this one I really liked the, the background. Like I thought it was cool, maybe we should make like a little wood, whatever, railing for him to sit on. And then maybe we will do a little bit of green and blue mountains in the background. Um, so what we are going to do a little bit different once we paint this line down is we're going to start the background right now before we start coloring him in um, so that we can bring of like his little furs kind of over top of the already painted on background. So it's not, it's going to be a very different look than what we have done before, but it's fun to try different stuff, right? Some people might want to do a ruler with this. Some people like me might hate rulers and just try to do everything without them just in spite of them. But we're just gonna draw a good old line. Oh, it's getting a little wobbly, oops. Cause I just don't think it matters if things are perfect or not. So I just eyeball it. But if you want to use a ruler, 100% go for it. 
we are just gonna make a nice little line where we will be in a bit making the wood. We're gonna start going to the blues and the greens in the sky first. Especially with the tail because of course his tail is not gonna be this skinny you guys. It's gonna be thicker. We're gonna puff it out a lot more. Um, but then it's hard to paint the background around that fluffiness and it'll take away from like what we want to look like light wispy hairs right so we're gonna paint the background up close to that and then once it's dry we're gonna come back with brown and paint it all fluffy on top of there and it'll be a nice effect on there okay so i'm gonna let you guys do this a little bit here oh i'll hold it close for a second and then those of you who are ready he kind of looks like a rat right now a little bit a little ratty like looking just close to the other picture like maybe you're like me maybe you want to bring his little your lines straight but your squirrels crooked hey hey we were just talking about how shifty these little squirrels are maybe that's a good thing <laughs> So I just like, whatever, when I brought it close and I was looking, I think it's very helpful when you look at, oh my gosh, my eyeball. When you look at your reference photo, it's very important to like keep looking back and forth. And when you do that little quick, like when you're doing a image search, when you're trying to see like what's different in one to the other, use that with your painting and the reference photo. Like keep looking back and forth and being like, oh, maybe he is a little bit like chubbier over here. Or, you know, it's a good way to correct your stuff or correct your eye because everyone's eyes see differently and uh, they can play tricks on you <laughs> to say the least okay is everyone getting out some blues some whites and some greens So these are the blues and greens that I'm going to be using. Again, you guys, use whatever. Just some people like to know exactly what I'm using. This one's a light blue permanent. There we go. She looks a little bit like that. A nice sky blue. I feel like I use it in every painting all the time. Um, and the green, we got a chromium oxide green. Like I said, green is my favorite color, but it is very hard. There's so many greens. And it looks like that. Like, oh, look, if I hold it close to the picture, you can see with some white in there, that could be the same green. Beauty! If you guys don't have green, yellow and blue mixes green. I've preached it many a times on the paint nights that if you have red, blue, yellow, black, and white, you can make any color in the rainbow. Some of them more difficult than others, but you can still make it happen. Realistically, you should be able to make black with red, um, yellow, and blue as well, but who got time for that, right? And again, sorry if it's redundant to people who come all the time, but I always try to say the same tips. Um, I never take out all the paints I'm going to use at the start. I like to take them out as I go so that they don't dry too fast or that you don't waste any. It just kind of helps a little bit of your control, which is nice. Oops. Oh, hello, Justin, if you're here. Aw, what a cutie. <laughs> the cutiest of cuties. Oh, my eyes itchy. Okay. How are we feeling on moving on to that background, everybody? I didn't accept it yet. But I was going to accept it after today. I just didn't read everything yet. But yeah, I'm going to accept it. I actually want to pull like a South Park mode. What is that South Park episode where you don't read the terms and conditions? Do you guys remember? Is the cutie jar out? <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're crazy. Okay. One for the cutie jar. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at just spoiling me. Just spoiling. Oh my gosh, Cinderella coming in with some confetti. 
I always appreciate the props, you guys. Anything to, oh my gosh. Just spoiling my girl as usual. My girl. Your girl is what I meant to say. Thank you, guys. You're the best. That word, I won't say it right now. It's going to come out a lot because look at this little guy. I almost actually just said it again because it just came out so naturally. But look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> okay. Let's do it, folks. So... We are another tip of the trade. Um, trick of the trade, maybe? Um, things that are darker. When you're trying to show things in distance or things close, you have to choose. Do you want the things close to appear light or the things far away to appear light? So in this case, even if you remember I tell you to squint at stuff, if you squint at that squirrel, you can see that the squirrel is the darkest part and he's the closest in view. So we really wanna bump back the color and the saturation that we're putting in the background. So even though you got that nice blue out of the tube, we are gonna mix a bunch of white into it, okay? Because we want it to be very light and very like pushed back. Hello, Flex Mang Manguera, Manguera? Hello. You caught us just in time. We're about to start the background of this little cutie squirrel. Rain, thank you for the love. Okay, so I'm just mixing. You don't want, it doesn't have to be like that chocolate milky consistency that we were doing before. We are going to, you want a good amount, sorry, of water and paint mixed together. I'm using a big brush. It can be square brush. It can be a point lead brush like this. It can be a brush like this. We're just like, when you are just laying down lots of color in a large space, using a little brush can get just so frustrating. So, we are going to paint the whole background, even though we are going to be painting some green in there, this whole background is going to be light blue, okay? God's girl, it's okay that you're late. It happens. So, see, super light. Oh, it looks a lot darker to you guys than it should. I want it like very light. Because we're going for a more natural, as natural as Tay Tay Ski can go, okay? And we are going to slob this paint around, okay? It's okay if you touch the shape of your squirrel a little bit because to make him look fluffy, we're going to be pulling some of that brown over top of the blue, right? So that's why we're painting the background right now versus last because when we paint it last, we usually paint that um, implied outline kind of, right? Around the figure, around the shape. But now since we know we're going back over that shape and we can bring it over, like you don't have to be too precious. Like see how, oops, where am I at here? See how right here I kind of went over the line a little bit <laughs> Can't I point? on his face here? But that's okay because I'm gonna, once it dries, we're gonna bring brown over top of it and it will be solved. You won't even know that happened, remember? Happy little accidents, right? And I'm just schlobbing that paint on, story of my life. Do, do, do. Not worrying about being too precious. You don't have to be slow and precise. Like these are the fun parts where you can just throw some paint around, okay? And see how light it is? Like even on your, it's not, I didn't want it to be super saturated. I like that it is a nice, nice, like very light blue. You don't have to go too close to his tail. Um, Cause remember we're making it puffy. So I'll show you close. Okay, so I'll show you the tail. I didn't go quite up to it. And I just, again, I know you guys have all started, so sorry if you weren't doing it, it's not a big deal. I was just very conscious of my brush strokes the whole time, as usual. I just went like left to right, so you can see, maybe with the light. You can see it's a little bit more smooth, um, instead of going up and down side to side, but it doesn't really matter. You can do obviously whatever you want. 
I'm just always conscious of how I lay my brush strokes down because that can help in creating texture. Let's see the tail. It's, uh, oh, it's this way. I wasn't really worried about covering too close because it's for sure going to be fluffier than that, right? It's hot in here. Ugh. Okay. This is just another, like, a lot of famous artists and a technique that you can use to do paintings is a base coat, like an underpainting of a specific color. A lot of the times it's orange or red. Like the whole canvas is just painted orange or red and then you paint on top of it. And that's a way of making the whole piece seem very unison because you can see pops of the same color throughout the whole piece. And I just kind of cheat sometimes when I don't feel like doing <laughs> a base painting. So since we've used this blue through the top of the squirrel, this is a completely optional step. You don't have to do this if you if it makes you feel weird <laughs> or something. But now I'm gonna bring this blue color and I'm just gonna do like a couple swipes down here. Yeah, I know this wood isn't blue. But if you think about color, it reflects on everything realistically. realistically. Some of the blue sky color could reflect onto this wood. And it'll make the painting feel more unison. So at the same time, you can just, if you want, toss a little bit of blue in the spots that you know are gonna be white or lighter after. Because again, this blue is not meant to be seen fully by the end of the painting. It's just ways to sneak in color throughout the piece because there's more colors and things than our eyes let us believe. So in a painting, it's nice that we can enhance what's actually inside. There we go. So that's just adding that same blue color throughout the whole animal. And remember, don't treat it precious. It's okay to throw some paint around and get out of the lines a little bit. It's encouraged. Oops, I just moved the camera and I just... It's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to let that blue dry a little bit. It doesn't have to dry <clears throat> all the way. Whoop! Scooch up. It doesn't have to uh, dry all the way because sometimes it's nice to work wet on wet. Things will blend together a little bit nicely, which is like the whole idea of oil paints. They stay wet forever so you can get like the nicest blends. But uh, then that also means you can't cover up a mistake until like a week later. <laughs> and I ain't about that life. Okay. So again, some of you are going to have to feel this out because you might have too wet of a background and that's okay. You can just wash me for now and I'll go over it again. We're still using that same big brush. I just grabbed some green and you're going to grab some of the blue that you have used and you're going to mix it in with that green. Okay, and then you're gonna add some white to it as well because remember we want it to be very pushed back, very in the distance, and if you look at this picture, we're about to be painting this mountain spot, uh, mountain spot, mountain in the background. And we, it looks super foggy, right? Like we don't really want it to be present or dominating the picture. So here we are just making this light bluey green with lots of white in it. Remember that paint dries darker than what's on your palette. Okay. And then we're just going to decide, I'm going to make it go a little bit lower down, but see how the color is not that much different than what we've already got on the canvas of that blue. Hello, King James. How are you doing? In this one, I'm not worrying too much about my brush strokes because going back and forth like this and kind of making it chunky like that kind of implies trees, in a sense. I know some of you are like, uh, what? But let's see if the camera can even catch it. Do you see how like 
with this big paintbrush and going side to side and having a little bit of mixtures on here, it kind of adds it to a nice tree line, right? Thanks, King James. What is a squirrel's favorite way to watch TV? Oh my gosh, you guys, Kenzie's in here and it's the best when she's in the peanut gallery. What is a squirrel's favorite way to watch TV? Something about nuts. <laughs> Does anybody know? Did Kenzie get us all? Nutflix. See, I knew nuts were involved. I knew it. Kenzie, can you give us some fun facts about squirrels or what? Perfect. Perfect. That is what we've needed. The hero we deserve. No, we don't deserve? How does that go? <laughs> but again, remember guys, we're just slobbing it on. It's okay if you got like some darker spots, if you're painted and mixed fully on your palette. Hey, who cares? It's kind of cool to add some variety of color in the background. But you do want to make sure that you add in white because it will really push it back in space. Okay, you guys, Kenzie's first fact. The front teeth never stop growing of a squirrel. Wow. That's interesting. See, okay, King James, I was literally just talking. He was saying, or I'm assuming he did with James. <laughs> uh, I watched a video and this guy found a baby squirrel and nursed it to health. And I was saying earlier that I saw on TikTok too, like somebody had like this baby squirrel and then it was like their pet and it was just the cutest little thing in the world. But then are they still cute if their teeth just grow forever and ever? I guess they like shave them down probably, right? Oh my gosh, Chicky Dude is saying that there is a squirrel obstacle course. No, I have not. Should I whip that up here? Here, I'm just gonna do the green. And then let's get some squirrel obstacle courses out here. Actually, maybe I have, actually maybe I have, now that I say it, somebody made an obstacle course so that the squirrels would stop like eating their, their food, right? Their like bird feed or something. Okay, here guys, oh, hello Ash, Ash, Jen. Um, let me just slob this on here, and then I'm gonna go find it. In Greek, squirrel means shadow tail. Oh my gosh. That's an interesting name, shadow tail. I wonder if they have more importance. So guys, as you see, we know that we are going to be painting like a little blurred out, sorry, where am I going? A little blurred out tree here, but I'm still bringing this bluey light green color of mountain all the way down to the edge of the canvas here. I know it's super hard to see, but that's like kind of the point, right? We don't want to take away from the squirrel. As you see in the picture here, the mountain actually goes like way above his head. So like if you want to bring that go for it. I just like the blue, so I want to keep a little bit more of it on there. Okay? What do my dog and a hungry squirrel have in common? I'm not witty. They both don't have nuts. God, I knew it was about nuts again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, I was gonna get the squirrel obstacle course. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see here while you guys keep doing that green. Squirrel obstacle course. And then don't worry, Penny and Rosie, because I don't want to keep you up too late. We will get to that squirrel and get him going ASAP. Okay, this is a bird feeder, and everything to my left is my attempt at making it squirrel proof. If they want the bird seed, they will first need to pass through what is basically an eight part ninja warrior obstacle course for squirrels. This course is extremely challenging. It is not for the timid of heart. But out of the gate, I will admit that in hindsight, that I completely underestimated my adversary. Now, if you're wondering why I would go through all this trouble, we need to go back eight weeks ago when I found myself stuck at home and very bored. 
board my wife painted. It hurt any of our adorable backyard cat. Oh, he's telling us all. Mistress. Sorry, I'll shout out. And because I know my wife name? is going to ask Mark me, no, this will not hurt the squirrel for two it's reasons. It's a long video. Yeah, Number one, they are amazing like them. cats and always land on. After a bit of a pivot to smooth things over. Uh, and might I just say, Fantastic Us, when you sit like that, you don't look an ounce over 700, as intended. intended. You can see the birds love it, but when the squirrel comes along, the cage shifts down, and now all the seed ports are covered up. Or is I surprised to see they can shimmy up and down a small metal pole, or even a large one. It releases a butt-ton of- Okay, you guys have to see it. Building the perfect squirrel-proof bird feeder by Mark Robber on Instagram. Ah, uh, YouTube. It's YouTube. I always forget I'm a YouTuber now, you guys. I have to get with the lingo. <laughs> oh my Lanta. We're just gonna we're just gonna hide this now. Let's just okay. We're back. Back in business. Have I seen the Eurasian red squirrel? No. Well now okay, next time I pause I'll have to show the cutie queen! Ooh, sorry. I said it again. Okay, looking at it close, do we have a nice little tree line? It's messy. Good to go. Now, again, play this by ear, y'all. If your paint's super wet, don't do it yet. If it's a little wet, like a little sticky, eh, that's fine. It's okay if it's a little wet, okay? But you are going to grab your green. No blue in it this time. We're doing just straight green. And you're gonna grab some white because again, even though the tree is closer, because when you squint, you can see the tree better than anything, but we still wanna add white into it because it's still further away than the squirrel and the wood that is in the foreground, correct? Sounded like Breaking Bad twangs for a second, but. Okay, actually, Kenzie, if you send me a picture, if you DM me a picture of a Eurasian red squirrel, I can share that with the class. <laughs> okay, we've got that water, I mean, white, white to down, is that the right word? <laughs> Unsaturated, white and green we've got here. I'm using a skinny brush just for now, just so that it's easier for some people to lay out, but some of you might be comfortable with a big brush. And again, we're just, it's not gonna be much rhyme or reason, but we're gonna imagine that the tree is over here. So there's just gonna be some pieces, you can make them a little squiggly if you want, you can make them straight if you want, I'll bring it closer. But it's more of a blob than a definite tree. From far away, it's all about what it looks like from far away. We're trying to imply that, oh, in the distance there's a tree. So, do you see I'm being conscious of my brush strokes? The paint underneath is a little bit wet still, that's okay. And I'm just slobbing, again, no really rhyme or reason. Is that another keyword of mine that I always say? <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we are just gonna, going down and the brush strokes are always kind of at an angle. Okay, see that there? But again, look, the green isn't that much different in value compared to that background blue green that we put down. And from far away, it just looks like there is a blurry tree in the background that is out of focus. And that's when we kind of have to give away of some of our details. Um, not give away, not worry so much about some of the details so that it looks more in the distance. gave me a snack. He's the best. Okay. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh. I'm just talking with my mouth full. Sorry, guys. Um, 
This is Kenzie's. This is the squirrel Kenzie was talking about. Oh my gosh. It's adorable. Look at that little ear fluff. Hello, Shay's Shay Cake. Shay Cake, one, two, three. You're new. Well, welcome to the stream. Here on my page, I teach you how to paint stuff. Like this squirrel, for instance. <laughs> We're just admiring another little cutie squirrel. Look at that guy. Okay. Oh my gosh, Kenzie, though. Thanks for sharing that. I love that. <laughs> okay. How are your trees looking, you guys? It's okay if you add, like, a couple darker pieces of green in there. It's okay if there's, like, a couple spots where you can see right through to the color underneath. That's fine. The trees aren't solid through, right? I always can't stress enough about not keeping it too precious. Like, when you look at this close up, it's literally just me doing that a bunch of times. You're going back, you're going to find some small streamers. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by. I'm sure you'll find lots of cool ones. Caffeine's got a lot of great channels. Okay, 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 okay. So we got a little tree there. Are we happy? Realistically, if you want, like, you can put, like, some darker green down here. Like, maybe that's the top of another tree if you want. Or if you don't want, you can wipe it away with a rag. Oops. As I just ruined underneath there. That's okay. Okay. How's that background? It's looking pretty close to what we're trying to copy. I just brought his tail up a little bit to fit in my canvas better. It doesn't have to be exact, right? Oh, I almost dropped it. Okay. Now let's get to the rest of the squirrel. Let's see where we're at, folks. We are gonna be taking out our brown again because first we're just gonna lay out some colors on the bottom. And you guys will be blown away about how easy it is to paint just some simple wood or something that implies wood at least. So if you have a square brush, you can use a square brush. Sometimes it's easy to go left to right like that. I personally love square brushes. Some other people do not. You can use another big pointed one as well. Okay. And we are going to take a little bit of white and mix it in with the brown. Okay. I just felt like that South Park guy. Mm -hmm. As <laughs> you're going to. Again, now it's important to be conscious of our brush strokes again. And you are going to, with this lighter color, always go left to right. But you're kind of just going to add a little bit of water on your brush and you're going to have some dry brush spots. So I'll show you what that looks like. If you don't have lots of water, you get this like sandpapery effect. Do you see that brown there? And then up here has lots of water in it. That would be the difference. Water goes on smooth. No water has a little bit of a sandpapery effect. So sometimes that takes trial and error. Um, you can, once you put the paint on your brush, you can dab it lightly on a rag or a paper towel and then go back and try to pull it over and you're just going to kind of make some texture in there. Again, it's wood, so it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. All right. And some of you are new, so you wouldn't know, but I just don't, I don't like painting to the border. I like leaving some of the canvas visible. I think that looks cool. So I'm just gonna paint just about to the bottom. There's gonna be some thin lines, some thick lines, some darker spots, some light spots. And 
And look, I went right straight into brown with my brush and right on the wet paint, I'm just gonna lightly draw some brown lines in there. And see how slowly it's building up and it's just kind of looking wood-like. Working wet on wet can be your friend after you've dry brushed some spots. You can go right onto wet paint. And it kind of blends them nicely together. are going to draw that dark line in here kind of closer to the end which kind of makes it you can tell then he's on a railing or if you want to leave it like this to make it just look like he's on a log that's fine too guys i'm sweating in the studios she's hot hot mama today oh, see what temperature does it say today 23 degrees outside? Canadian degrees. All y'all Americans. Rosie's sweating too. See guys, it's she's hot in Alberta. I hope you're not nobody be sweating over stress though. It's just sweating because it's hot outside. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we've got that cool wood texture. You can keep like, oh look, I'll just put a little brown little sh slice in there that looks kind of woody and see there's little bits of the blue like popping through in some of these spots again just makes the whole piece feel cohesive just some little cheating tricks of the trade Whew. okay i'll let you guys do that for a little bit that might take some time to I could just pick at it forever. Whoop. So basically from this point on, we're just gonna be painting up that squirrely. It's gonna be mostly brown and white, but there's gonna be a little bit of orange that we're gonna add in there just to bring some color into him. Cause if you look at him, he does, he's not just pure brown. He's got some colors in like the tips of his tail and a little bit in the bottom of his uh, little thigh or whatever you want to call that leg. <laughs> um, uh, orange will help with that. Like I said, we're not going to be doing the obnoxious saturated tay styles today, but I love painting realistic colors too. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Okay. Oh, I won't start um uh, what you would call it yawning and getting you all to catch my yawns this time too give me four seconds though i'll be right back and then we will how about i get that on my palette first we like i said we'll be doing brown and orange i'm always using that burnt umber but there is also i mean for orange i'm using whoa taylor pull it back girl uh cadmium orange which looks like that this paint tube has seen some better days Literally the tiniest, we don't need much orange. Um, oh my God, Kenzie, that picture of that cutie little squirrel with its toughy little ears is just like all I can see right here. <laughs> you keep forgetting to buy cat orange. Eh, yellow and red will make it for you too, if you want. Okay, oh my God, I keep doing the wrong button. You guys, on Thursday before our stream, I'm getting my, my finger tattoos touched up and added to, so I'm going to be rocking that black glove again. I don't know. Actually, that was before most of you have been here before, actually. Last time I got my hands tattooed, I have to wear this, like, funny little black rubber glove for uh, the time being until those resolve. Not resolve. <laughs> heal themselves. I'm excited. I'm adding a couple little cutie things. Can't wait to show you. Um, 
Rosie says she wants all the cool art stuff you have. Well, girl, one day you'll have it. It took me a very, very long time to grow my supplies that I have now, but hey, little bits all the way. One day you'll have them. If that's what you want, then you'll get it. Who knows when? Who knows when? But I actually, when my grandma passed away, which is, I've talked about before, this uh, little table easel is my grandmother's. Um, but when she passed away, I inherited all of her art stuff because there was no one else really in the family that was going down that path. Um, so I still have, like, I still use her watercolors. The oils are kind of all messed up, but I just, like, held on to the tubes anyway because I couldn't let go of that. Um, and then what else of hers do I still have? Lots of charcoal pencils. Rosie's great great aunt was an artist and you inherited all of her art stuff. Well, look at that. Rosie is just living the same life as me. <laughs> I love it. That's so sweet. I know, isn't it nice? I know, I know. I have her like little whatever from, what are those things called from? Their, um, at a funeral, you get the, like, the little card with their picture and everything. It's been always on my wall. And then these things, I don't know if you guys can see right here. She, this, <laughs> my grandma saved, she cut them out. They're called charmers. So they were like beside like the Charlie Brown and the magazine, or not the magazine, and the newspapers. Let me see if I have a couple right here. This is how sweet she was. They are by Hallmark. And what does it say? So it's from the journal in 19, what is that? 70, come on, come on, come on. Right here. Where is my hat? It says Saturday, May 24th, 1975. And she saved these things. They're called charmers. And they're like, just so cute. It's like, okay, there's like a little girl. She's just like happy. And she's like looking at some birds. And then it's like, there's so much beauty to discover. Like, how cute. And then it's like, those who give have all things. Oh, they're like falling apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one's like, okay, okay. It's like a father thinks up nice things to do and then does them. <laughs> I just, and this one's from June 14th, 1975. Yeah, so I have a bunch of these. I was the, also the... I saved all of them because I thought it was so cute that she just saved them. A hug a day keeps the blues away. A friend doesn't lend a helping hand, but gives it. And they're just like walking through. <laughs> yeah, my sweet angel of a grandma. But then you can see like Charlie Brown was on the other side, like the peanuts, which is pretty crazy, but she didn't care about those. She just cared about the charmers. Trying to make the world a better place. Anyway, okay, <laughs> tangent for a second. I think I just saw Rain was saying Rosie was named after her. Her name was Rose. Like, ah, you guys, I love hearing these stories. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna be right back. <laughs> okay, give me four seconds. <laughs> and then we're peeing that squirrel. It's gonna be quick, I promise. Okay, 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 okay. ADHD life is right. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Good. Y'all ready to paint a squirrel? Totally depending on the size of your squirrel um, it will be what brush size you use, okay? I would suggest something, like if yours is roughly the same size as mine, like something in the middle, like not as big as the big one, not as small as the one we're using there, just a nice middle one. And remember, we like to go dark to light, right? And rhyme, apparently. <laughs> and we want there to be a good chunk of paint. We don't want it to be like super watery and chocolate milky or whatchamacallit. We want a good amount of paint on there. 
And we are going to start filling up this squirrel, but we're, as usual, going to be very conscious of our brush strokes. And you're just going to start slobbing on and following the shape of his body, slobbing on some brown. Again, if you're not doing acrylic paint, you should be conscious of leaving some spaces lighter. What's different with other mediums would be that you would just do a light, light, light layer of brown. And then where he gets darker, you just keep doing layers where the darker is. So it's kind of opposite of what we're doing. We paint it all dark and then we just lighten up where the light spots are. And we're gonna bring it up. Just kind of following wherever his body shape is going. Oh, I made mine super chunky too. That's all right. And it's so funny because I'm sure some of you, again, it happens all the time. Everybody paints different and everybody is different. Um, <laughs> but I, I've evidently jump around a lot because that's just how my brain works. The ADD just keeps her going in all these different directions. But then there's some people that I watch paint and they would just like start at this corner and they would just like slowly do tiny little pieces until it's completely full and just focus continuously on one spot. And I'm just like, how about over here? How about over here? <laughs> so sorry, you guys, if you if it's stressful to follow along how I paint. But she's getting the tay tay experience. <laughs> Again, it's okay if you see some little pieces poking through of the blue we put underneath, but not the end of the world if we cover it up. You'll still actually be able to see it more than you think. He just looks like a little brown rat right now, hey? Do, 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 do. Little tree rat, exactly. How's that? The only acceptable type of rat. <laughs> yeah, actually that is true. Alberta doesn't have rats. And I thought, naive little Canadian as I am, I thought just all of Canada didn't have rats. And I just recently found out that no, just Alberta is very strict on the rats. <laughs> One of my friends moved from like Winnipeg or something and she had a pet. Where did you move from Rosie? Was it Winnipeg? I think it was. Um, not this Rosie, not the Rosie. Um, and they had a pet rat, but then they weren't allowed to like bring him or something into the Alberta board. I mean, borders. Okay. We've got a squirrel. Rat patrol the border. There you go. Literally. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, he's got a little hand that's also brown. Again, you can paint whatever you want in his hand. I don't know what we're going to do yet. And then for the fun part for his tail, you are literally just going to start fluffing. And it's just by starting at that line that we have created for his tail and just puffing out hairs from it. How fun. So I start on the bottom and the top is kind of flat until it gets up to this top curve and then he starts fluffing out again. Right? Again, water will be helpful for you. Water on your brush will help you pull the paint for you a little bit better. I'm looking at this from the side, so it's a little crazy, but that's okay. Let's see. How's that? I know he looks very, like, fluffy right now. We'll add some more colors in there, or you can, like, smooth it out if you want to. Depending on what you want. My light's pretty reflecty today, so it looks interesting on your guys' screen, but that's fine. You can make his tail as puffy as you want. 
Bring them out a little bit more. Make it all wispy. Because another thing that we can do right now, and it's completely dependent on you what type of paintbrush you want to use. If you have like a tiny, tiny little baby one like this, it might be helpful for you. But you can also puff his hair, like him out a little bit. With just like some wispy, I'll show you guys up close in a second. But remember, we painted that background first so that we could carry some of these colors over top it and not have to worry about like outlining around them again or something, right? So you can just kind of like bring some little like puffies. See what I mean? Like over top of the board, of the background, we've made him just a little bit puffy over top. Same over here, like you can make him as fluffy as you want. Right? Oh, sorry, my light's reflecting. At this point too, if you went over some spots with your background, this I personally don't like using little brushes and like doing this one. But again, like before, you can use this time to maybe reshape his ear if you didn't like it or whatever. This is you have the brown out on your brush and you can do whatever you want to clean stuff up. <laughs> Look what Kenzie just sent me. It's funny because I'm still on your DM, so whatever you send comes up here. The mask for me! <laughs> I actually... Shit, what's her name? I just ordered two, like, really funky masks off an artist I follow on Instagram from San Francisco. I'm sorry, guys. They don't have Baby Yoda on them like that. Um, but... Um, I can show you guys as, cause I'm sure this brown is taking some time. I'll show you guys the ones that I just bought. And I will share her info after if I can remember here. Where are you red bubble? Her name is, she paints like very colorful and beautiful too. I like. Like very rainbow. Her name's like Katya. I'm so bad at names. Can you just okay? My phone's just malfunctioning. Okay, so obviously does this not have my name my name all over it? Look, it's like a paint drippy bedazzled. Check that out. And then my other one is this one. Isn't that pretty? Come on. Aren't they funky? Well, so this is, uh, it's from a specific artist. Her name is Kate Tova. If I remember after my YouTube video, I will post it, but Kate Tova. Check that out, you guys. She paints beautifully. Highly recommend. Back to business, though. Okay. So, we've got the brown. It is totally okay if the brown is still a little wet. Come on, zoom in. That's so weird why it won't focus. There we go. Okay. We're going to add the tiniest touch ever of brown. I mean, of white into our brown. Okay? We don't want it to be hugely different, but we just want a little bit of touch in there. Right? Just a little touch of brown. And you can use, again, depending on what size your squirrel is, feel free to use whatever brush you think is appropriate. You might need to use a smaller one than I am. But we're just going to go in some spots and we are going to brush on some of that little fur, 
okay? In a lighter color because we like to go light, dark to light, right? And I am just like making sure that you can still see some of the color underneath. And we're just gonna do above his back a little bit. We are going to give him a little bit on his little thigh. And don't worry, I'll hold off. Yeah, Kenzie, aren't they pretty? I don't know if the I haven't really bought any like designer masks or anything, so I don't know if like their price is outrageous or anything, but I had no problem with buying those. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in his tail too, you guys. Um, okay guys, yeah, I thought so too. And since, hey, we're still, <laughs> it might be naive of me, but I'm, we're still hoping that we can go on our Japan trip in October. And I'm sure we'll probably have to wear masks. Um, so I thought, heck, might as well grab some cute ones. And obviously to wear at home. I just don't leave my house very often anyway, so it doesn't really matter at home. <laughs> so we've just given him some other lighter colors in his tail. But again, it's not the whole thing. It's like the top half of the shapes. face. We're gonna add some lighter ones on the top part. And when, I, when I'm saying like the top part is because if you're imagining the shapes that we drew originally, we're doing the light on the top half. Here's the circle. We're doing the light on the top half. Hello, Janzel. Thank you. Just a cutie little squirrel. Can I go wrong? There's a bunch of people at home painting squirrels too. Ah, oh, cutie. Justin caught the cutie. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs> the cutie jar kills me. Okay, so I'm putting some light on there. Again, you want to see the brown. Every time we put a new layer, a new color on top of a color we did before, we always want to see those colors underneath. That's like the whole point of the layering or of getting some more texture in there. Or else there'd be no point of painting all these different colors. They just cover each other up. So it's totally okay if you can see some of the color underneath. And now I'm just adding a little bit more brown to the concoction just to add a little bit of variety in the color there. The squirrel's name is Shifty the Squirrel. <laughs> okay, okay. And then guess what? If you don't like, like if you think this looks washed out or you overdid it in some spots and you can't see the brown underneath, then just go in with a clean brush and add just brown or just a little bit of darker color and do the same thing a little bit sporadically over top of it. And you're just gonna be doing the same thing, adding more texture, but giving a variety of color. It is a cutie squirrel. Thanks, chicken lady. Shifty the little sneak. I know. Oh my gosh. I literally, I don't mean to say it all the time. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Show you up close. See, there's not, again, I know I say no rhyme or reason all the time, but because I've said it before, things in nature shouldn't be symmetrical or perfect, right? You kind of want it to be a little crazy and erratic irregular and sporadic, right? Okay. So we just have a little bit of a lighter layer to add and then his eyeballs and we're just about finito, folks. Okay. I'm getting out a little bit of a skinnier brush. 
You just love that little squirrel? So do I, actually. Penny, I hope you love your little squirrel out there. Okay, wait, I'll let you guys do that. Have you, have you guys been sending some pictures in? Oh, yeah, you have. Okay, here we go. Where are we at? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Look at that little chonky. Oh, I love him. Oh, this was before, but that was looking great at that point. So I'm looking at it sideways. I know sometimes they won't send straight, and I don't know why. And then I know this is a story. Oh, look at him in there. I wonder how his fluffy tail's looking now. Do we have any more pictures sent here? Yeah, we do. Oh my gosh, of course, girl, going with... I love the pink squirrel. And nice colors like with the orange in the background. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I like that. Sunset squirrel. Yeah, it is a sunset squirrel. Love it, you guys. And then Rose. Oh, look at them. That's Rosie and Penny and their squirrels. You guys know that I'll share all these stories, but look at them just doing amazing as always. Didn't doubt anything less. Rosie's so good. I'm dead. I know. I know. Rosie. We're very talented. We're just pumping her tires, you guys. You keep working hard. I love it. She has come a long way in a very short time. And that's because she's putting that work, right, Rosie? I know you. Drawn whenever you can. She was out on a trip with her family this weekend, and I saw she made a post saying that you can draw anywhere and she was doing like a stick or a rock or something in the sand and drawing in the sand yes she knows what to do you just gotta draw every day and then you're gonna be good right ro that's the secret okay you guys again it's okay if we got yeah rosie says bashfully <laughs> yeah, I know. hey you should be proud of your talent and your hard work because whenever people ask me about my business, I 9,000%, I'm where I am today because I work very hard. And I've put in the time. And I've put in the work and I still put in the work. So I think it's inevitable that you'll get things you want if you put in the hard work. Um, when's the Rosie and Tay Tay collab coming? Ooh, that's a good idea. Either I should paint something and send to Rosie, or Rosie should paint something and send to me, and the other one finishes it. That's a good idea, hey? We'll think about that one, Rosie. Okay, I'm just gabbing a lot today, you guys. Back to the squirrel. Um, we've got basically white. We've got some brown in there, too. You guys, this is probably going to look white. It does look right. Of course we can do that, Rosie. 900% we can do that. You let me know if you want me to paint something or you to paint something first. Who wants to be the first one? We've got this light, almost white, but there's some brown in there on our brush. Me first. Okay, Rosie, you've got my address. You know. You go. Yeah, you guys, Rosie has my address, but you guys don't. <laughs> okay. With this almost white color, I am just putting a couple little swipes of white in its tail. Again, use a little brush if you want. She's so creepy. No, 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 currently yogurt. You don't know if she, <laughs> Rosie is my little five-year-old, six-year-old, sorry, protege. We have uh, my young grasshopper, if you will. <laughs> Her mom has connected us through social media and she has just learned and grown so much as a little artist and I love it. <laughs> hey, it's okay, of course, that's where I explained it. I, of course you didn't know. No worries at all. And her mom is, that's who's texting for us. That's her mom on there. You're right. Me just saying someone has my address, could that could mean that they're creepy, but not in this situation. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so what are we doing, guys? We've put some of these little white swipies in there. There is probably other people currently yogurt who are thinking the same as you, so it's a good thing you said something. Um, uh, where else are we putting some light on that cute little squirrel? Let's take a peek here. We're gonna add just a little line above his nose. So see what I did there? 
It's just a lot. It's like a number one. Looks like a little number one in there. We are going to brush in to... Again, I'm always being conscious of my brush strokes. I'm just gonna go left to right, left to right. And we're gonna do like his little shoulder almost comes up to here. It's basically just a little line of that white color. You can use your finger to blend it out a little if you want. That's what I always do. But then again, if once this dries and you don't like it, we can go back with a little bit of brown to smooth up that line. No mistakes. By the way, you love my painting. Thank you, Curly Yogurts. Um, I'm gonna be sharing everybody else's too. There's a lot of people painting out in the Unwebs universe right now. So they, uh, I, I share with all theirs with you guys too. Okay, and where else does he have white? Let's go to that little bottom elbows, little elbows. Boop, boop, boop. Remember, this isn't pure white. This is white with some brown in it, just not very much. And then same on his little leg and his thigh. We're gonna brush some of the lighter color here. And let's put that there. So those are a little squirrely coming together. You can make some tufts in his ear if you want. Again, this is where it kind of comes to detail. Completely up to you how many little tuffies, how many different little colors and textures you want to add. Because realistically, you could go and do this all day if you want. And for his fingers, it's kind of easy. We don't have to do anything too crazy. You can just add a little bit of a white line. Just a couple little lines away from each other so it kind of implies the outline. I'll show you. Close up in a second there. Again, some of you might have wanted to put something in his hands. That's possible too. But see how I just did a couple white lines on top of the already dark brown. So it just kind of did some work for us. Oh yeah, where do we add orange? <laughs> Rosie, good call. I think I forgot about orange. Okay, let's just finish this one spot and we'll do the orange part. <laughs> I'm just distracted today. <laughs> uh, and then, where else does he have a little bit of white? Funnily enough, just a little bit right here if you wanna add it because his leg ends there and his tail starts there. So it's just a little bit of a line. That's so funny. Good call, Rosie. Thanks for remembering. <laughs> and remember, we're basically using the same colors that we used on this wood. So if this is, you want to take a chance to like lighten up some of those spots, go for it. Right? Whatever you need. So now we're going to add a little bit of orange and then we're going to do his eyeballs. And I'm telling you, they're basically complete. Okay? He might have to, we'll do that with the lighter orange one. Okay. I just kind of gave him a beard almost with a little bit of a darker. We had just a touch more brown in there. How is that? Okay, okay, okay. And like Rosie remembered for the class, thankful for her, we need to add some orange into our brown. It's not gonna be straight brown. It's gonna be like we were doing over here where we mix the blue and the green together. We are gonna mix the brown and the orange together. You can get first start with just pure brown, whatever pure brown you're using. Grab a tiny touch of orange. And some people's orange and browns might be different strengths. So we'll see how it shows here. Oh my gosh, I literally just, <laughs> I just threw my paintbrush and it just fell and 
<laughs> Stop my whole stand. Oops. Anyway. Whew. See how that's like, it's brown, but you can tell there's some orange in there, right? Whoop, whoop. I know, so aggressive, just by accident. And again, it's not anything crazy. It's kind of what we've already been doing before. You want a little bit of water on your brush, but it doesn't have to be like a watered down consistency. And we are gonna go in to some of these bottom spots and we're just gonna add some of these swipes where all the dark brown is, not where we went with the light colors, but more where the dark brown is. We are gonna add some of these swipeies of the orangey brown. Like if I bring this closer, do you guys see? How it just adds just a little touch more of whatever, life to him when it's not just brown. Instant, um, let's add some little swipeies. If you wanna add more orange, be my guest. Who knows what Flamingo's doing for hers with her pink one. You actually probably could do orange too, maybe. Oops, I made that a little too. Remember, you can always wipe stuff away. Totally up to you. And also, again, just like usual, if you don't want to do this orange step, you don't have to either. If you're happy and comfortable in just using brown, that's cool too. But again, it's just a way to add a little bit more life to him, a little more color, so he's a little more exciting. Not that you're not already exciting, little gaffer. <laughs> little shifty squirrel. I'm just kind of going around a little bit more. And this nice thing about this orange is it's going to differentiate him from the log as well, if you want. But those shapes at the start, don't forget about them. The shapes that we started with, because they still are like mocking the shape of the animal that you can follow when you're doing these little hairs, right? Like this was a circle, so you can follow the shape of the circle when you lay down those shapes. Or right here, this was his shoulder. So realistically at the end here, you can round this out because that's where that shape was. It wasn't just there for no reason. It helps you understand how the body is shaped and how you can play with light and how you play with color and texture on him. And then remember what I said, if you don't like some of these lines, like now you can go, let's see if I can do this this awkward way, but now you can bring little tufts of the darker color over top of the light that we already did, right? Oh, maybe like this will look better. So if you want to smooth out that line a little bit, know what I'm saying? And just because he needs to have the same colors all throughout, I'm just going to add a little bit more up in his face. I know on your screen it just looks like this is one big blob, but I swear it's not. <laughs> there are all these little conscious little brushstroke hairs that we're doing, okay? Okay, okay, okay. All right, again, we're going back to however far you wanna push this thing. So if you like Google a squirrel and you see a squirrel close up, like there is so much color and so much little different, so much, so many different little furs and colors inside of it. So like, again, you can go into that brown orange that you made and then you can add a little bit of white in there and you can go around and add that on. Like the, uh, the options are endless when it comes to how far you want to push a furry animal because they have so much color inside of them. There's a lot of things that you can play with. So I'm not going to keep going over and over again because for us, it's just, it's, you guys know how to do this. It's the same step every single time. It's just adding a different color on your brush. So for the sake of speeding up the process, let's go and get some black out onto your palettes, okay? 
And again, black, like I always say, is so powerful. So don't worry about taking much out onto your palette. We don't need much at all. Like the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest amount, okay? And this is just me being nitpicky and because I love doing little hairs. It's so fun for me to just go... Um, that's I'm just doing exactly what I was saying. If you... I just added a little bit of white to that same color that I just went around over everything with and adding some of those hairs in certain spots. Oh, okay. Everybody getting their black out. I can't believe how hot it still is in here. Okay. We have one air conditioning, but we leave it in the room. I feel like sleeping cold is more important, right? Okay, where's the black at? Okay, we are using black. Ugh. And like I said, like the tiniest amount, like that's like too much. I've had this black tube, or black tube, black container. Oh no. For as long as the same amount of time that I've went through two and a half of these white ones that are bigger because I use so much white on everything and black just goes so far. Okay, we've got black on our palettes. And we are going to start by using a tiny little brush. What is this? Somebody just texted me a picture of a squirrel. Oh my gosh, it's cute. Okay, hold up. Um, I'm using a little brush, but if you don't have a brush this small, it's very okay. You can use a Sharpie if you want. I know, Rosie, sometimes you like to use a Sharpie. Um, uh, but we are first just going to make just a little Z inside of that ear. It's backwards, but that's okay. And you're gonna do just a tiny little black line around the inside of that ear. Took that at Castle Mountain. Oh, I know who that is. And my phone didn't tell me who's texting me, but I know who if you're saying Castle Mountain. Lisa, we're Daryl, but guys, look, we're basically painting the squirrel that they saw. And see, you can see the orange in there, right? Look at the orange and the red in that fur. And see, now when you look at ours, it's not like there's loads, it's not like there's bright orange, but you can tell that it's a little bit different colored than his brown foot, right? Just add some more fun in there. Okay, and now his eyeball. I don't know if it's going to be stressful for people or not. Sometimes painting an oval is difficult, so I'm going to try to teach it an easier way, maybe, maybe not. So you're just going to do a circle first, because I think circles are a bit easier for people. You can just color in that circle. So he just has a little button eyeball. Okay. And then you are just going to come around the top, and you're just going to point, like, Bring, oh, I don't know if I can show this close. So I already did it on that side. We had a circle. I started at the bottom and I came up and brought it to a point. Does that make sense? On this side, you're gonna come up and you're just gonna add like a pointed edge to the side of your circle. You can literally just color it in. For some people, an oval might be easier, but I'm just like a circle and then bring them to points at the edge. Tell me if that was confusing. <laughs> We're gonna go over it with some light colors, so it's fine for now. We gotta let that dry completely. But still, with a little brush or a little Sharpie, we're gonna come down in that nose and we're just gonna draw one little line. And we are gonna do little whisker holes. Beep, 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 beep. Whisker holes. Probably not the accurate word for them, but, right? And then when 
once you come down from his nose, he does have a little line for a little mouth. You can make his chin come out a little bit more underneath if you want, or you can just draw the line. But there you'll see close up, just a little mouthy. And then a couple more dots, whatever, make as many whiskers as you want. For his hands, you can just add little tiny lines just at the end of his fingers for his little tiny shifty claws. Like hardly there lines. Look at that manicure. And then same for his toesies. He's got one little nail coming out of the first toe. A second little nail coming out of the little circle if you did one before. Just listen to some crazy music. And realistically, like you can make a dark line under the bottom of your squirrel to show that he is in space. It not in space, but sitting on that ledge. Hello, Lamas. 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 <laughs> However you pronounce that. Basically squirrel life, right? And so another thing, again, might feel redundant, might not be necessary for everybody, but where, what am I saying? You can grab your brown. Again, this is another level of whatever extra layers if you'd like. You grab your brown and you grab a touch of black because black is powerful, right? And you want more brown than black, but it's just going to be a little bit darker of a color. And the same thing, you can look, if you squint at our little squirrel at the bottom, where are the darker spots? So you can bring some, and I'm still always brushing it like the hair is always being very um, loose and letting paint, letting us see the colors underneath. But we've got some darker there. We've got some darker down here. It's like the shadows is what we're implying right now. Again, some people might not need it. You don't even have to go this level if you want. Just act, adding extra depth if you want to take that time. But our last step, I'm just waiting to for the black to dry because we need it to dry completely before we can do our last step. So I'm just kind of puttering. I call this productive puttering. We're still... We're not really doing anything we have to, but we're making something happen. And same at the bottom of his little tail. I just will never forget my, like, it's my high school art teacher even, not even an art school teacher. Just talking about how it's important to have the purest of white and the darkest of dark and everything in between. You want to have nice different amount of values throughout your piece to keep it, I don't know, as bold and as um, I don't know what the exact word is that I'm looking for there, but that's one thing that never left my brain. I thought I did an amazing piece and she said, you have to make your blacks blacker, more striking. Yeah, striking is probably the right word. Thank you, cheeky dude. More striking. And remember, this was an oval here, right? Like that was his like chubby little thigh. So we're acknowledging that's still under there. So that's kind of how I knew where to put his little back shape there. Okay, and then what else? Maybe a little in his ear. Maybe a little more right here. I don't know, sure. Okay. Are you guys ready to make an eyelid and a cute little white highlight, which just, y'all know is my favorite, a nice little white highlight and 
things will come together. See, look, let's make some little tufts back there too, why not? Okay. Right, maybe a little under his eyeball too. Now I'm just getting away on myself here. Hey, if somebody like to splatter, I'm sure you could splatter some colors onto here too. That's a lesson I can't give right now. Maybe I should do that on my Instagram, or on my YouTube. Just make a couple like classes of just like how to splatter, how to do a thick and thin line, and then just refer to that class instead of teaching it every class. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Okay. You're gonna wanna get a little brush back out. And if the color is still wet or you still have some of it on your palette, awesome. If not, easy to make it again. We just wanna really light, like this light um, uh, brown and white. Oh, that's nice, Lawson. Well, thank you. Look, we did something realistic colored with a full background, like where are we today, hey? No splatter, no glitter, no rainbows. But uh, again, we are bringing that brown, light white brown. It's not white, but there, even though that looks like white to you, I swear there's brown in there. We're gonna go above that eyeball. This is a chance too, if you think you made your eye too big, you can use this to kind of like white out to your mistakes, but we are gonna, oh, okay, here, should I show everybody the pictures? Sorry, I look at me, I said I'd try to end early, but uh, I tangented my life away. Story of my life. Well, here's just at this point at least, so the girls can see, oh, you guys. There's Rosie Squirrel, and there's Betty Squirrel! Look at them both. It looks like Rosie put one something in her, my computer shoe squirrel, a heart in her squirrel's hand. Penny, look at yours, cutie squirrel, too. You guys, look. Oh my gosh, love, 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 love. The last step is just an eyelid. So girls, once you wake up, it'll be on YouTube, I promise. Thanks for stopping by. As usual, we love having you. Sleep good, girls. Okay, just this eyelid. eyelid. We're just gonna bring this light color right over top of that oval that we made. It's just gonna be like you're painting like eyeliner on him. Maybe some eyeshadow for the boys that have if you've never done that, not saying boys shouldn't, just if you are a boy who has not, or a girl who has not. <laughs> we are just going to follow the shape of that eyeball that we did before. The top one's a little bit thicker than the bottom one. But you see that? I'm just being touchy because he's just so fun and fluffy. Oops. Okay. Guys, is our squirrely done? Just the piece de resistance. Well, they have whiskers, okay? But I won't lie to you. Even I am a little bit nervous to paint the whiskers because they're so thin and dainty. Let's see. Well, we'll just do the little highlight on his eyeball because that is usually the last step. Okay, ready? We've got just a pure white. Oh, from far away you can't see it as well. That's too much, wait, wait, ignore that. Where's my... <laughs> I made it a little too thick, let's just... Uh... There, that's better. See, just a nice little white highlight on that eyeball. It's in a curve in the shape of the eye. And I think that's it, folks. 
Unless you want me to try the whiskers, you could do it with a pencil. You can do it with a thin Sharpie. You can do it with a brush. I don't, don't believe in you. I feel like you can do it if you wish. I just, from past experience, little dainty things like that sometimes don't go very well for people and I don't want it to be uh, a paint and ruin a... So like, let's see if I use like a pencil, let's see. Or like even a pen, like this is a ballpoint, ballpoint, is that what they're called? Uni ball? Oh yeah, that's the shit. Uh, stuff, sorry. <laughs> I don't usually swear on here. We're just going to do some little lines that just like fan out of his little face. But again, not a necessary step because from your point of view, looking at that squirrel in this picture, you probably can't even see any whiskers, hey? close so you can see. Are we finito or squirrelito? Why are you dead? Because they're so cute? <laughs> and again, of course, remember, everyone's painting might be different. Putting one in the cue jar because I said it. <laughs> um... Um, 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 see, like, at this ball, like, maybe your squirrel is going to kind of, these values are the same. See how it kind of disappears in there a little bit? If that's happening to you, this is, again, it's just a, to solve a problem in case you have one. You can go back in there with a little brush, and you can just fluff out some of those brown hairs just to kind of differentiate an outline without painting an outline. If that makes sense. And you can do that anywhere. If you feel like you need to make an outline anywhere, just kind of go back in with a darker color on some of these parts. But whatever, I think we are el complete. Oh, I did tell you guys that we were going to do a dark brown line there, hey? Again, another optional if you want. I'm just going to use brown with a touch of black and a little touch of white in there too so it's not too crazy let's just uh... I can't breathe when I do that so sorry I just stop talking there <laughs> I love him. So cute. How are we doing, folks? Should I go through what we've got? Oh. Oh. oh, look at him. I like her, like, it's nice doing natural colors too, I think, hey? Oh, I guess, right, I won't show, did I already show your faces? I was like, I won't show your faces, but I don't think I can. They did a mother-daughter stay of painting, which is so cute. Okay, holding a balloon with a party hat. I love him, and I love that he's chunky. Um, we've got, look at him! Oh my gosh, I love You guys both do such a good job too. See, I like that we played around. I know I already said that, but I like that we played around with natural colors. Look at this beauty. Oh, I like how she ended up. Is that a bow on her neck? Is that what I'm seeing? 
Love the colors of your wood's nice too. I like that. I like that. Oh, I'm yawning again. Sorry, guys. Oh, right. And these were pennies. A oh, four year old and six year old pen, uh, Penny and Rosie. I love that Rosie's just has a little heart. I think that's adorable. Oh, look at that guy. Like, nice fluffy tail. Ooh, see, and yours is a nice reddy orange, too. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's the championship bow for the guns displayed. Oh, let's get back there to see the whole story. Look at that. Love, love, love. Did anybody send me some message request ones. I always got to check there because my phone's weird. Ooh, you guys. Talking about photos my aunt does. Look at a little bird. She just took a pic. We should have painted that hummingbird. Look how cute it is. She takes good photos, guys. I told ya. Okay, I went on here for a reason, though. Here's my brand. Arms were a little bigger than I meant them to be. Oh, for the gun show is what you meant. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. Tickets to the gun show. Um, Love them, you guys. Thanks for following along. I was happy to be back and normal today. Back with the good old regular OBS unfortunately with the bad music but i think it was cool that we did something a little different than usual today here's my thumbnail is that a squirrel <laughs> is that accurate i don't know maybe who knows um other than that haven't decided where we're gonna paint on thursday let me know if you guys want another animal if anybody has any other ideas i did write down i started a list <laughs> A list of things that people were saying. I've got like Buddha, owl, tiger, fox, elephant, fish, sailboat, Vespa, palm tree, pineapple, unicorn, donkey, birdhouse, owl, narwhal, pig. Ooh, narwhal's good to add to the list. There's no narwhal on the list. Pig is on the list. A cheeseburger. I think I put that on the list myself. No, somebody did suggest a cheeseburger, but I really want to paint a cheeseburger one day. A deer. My aunt has a lot of great photos of deers. A wiener dog, a moose, a mountain. Then I also have to find out when I'm going to do that Father's Day one again. I don't know. Moose, somebody says. Chihuahua. Yeah, Cinderella, you for sure suggested that. That's when I wrote that down was for sure yours because pig and chihuahua are side by side, so I think that was... When you suggested those, but um, again, also people watching on YouTube, always feel free. Send me an email if you don't have Instagram, but Instagram is usually the best. Send me a line if you have an idea or want to try something or a question or whatever. I'm open for business. All right. Okay, guys. 10.03, look at that. A perfect two-hour session. That's a pretty quick one, I feel like. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to tag my aunt and all of them. She loves seeing all of your pictures. Even if you don't put them on your story, I always send them to her. <laughs> um, thanks again. Awesome as always. Thanks, lady. Hey, guys, no problem. Chicky dude, thank you. No problem. Glad you loved it. I'm back on Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget. 8 p.m. MDT. Right? And like, like and subscribe, you guys, <laughs> on Caffeine, on YouTube, on Instagram. I am sharing my life on Instagram always. So if you ever want to see what to, the life of just being an artist at home, give me a follow in my stories. Um, and obviously, if you have a Caffeine account, if you're watching this later, if you're watching this right now but don't have a Caffeine account, you guys... It's great to make it to a live one if you can. I understand there's lots of you in different places, different time zones you can, but hey, they're a lot of fun if you can make it. Um, and other than that, I got my thumbnail as a squirrel. <laughs> and um, see you on Thursday.
to Thursday. The I almost said Tuesday, but you know where my brain is. Okay. Talk to you all next time. So fun. Thanks, Justo. I also missed a call today, and I will get that back. Okay. <laughs> See you guys next time. Thank you.